despite the struggles, the Phillies starting pitching continues to impress during the first six weeks of the season. The Phillies' homegrown left-hander has been dominating this year and unflappable over his last four starts. A week ago, Cole delivered a message to the Nationals and delivered a message to the rest of baseball that the rotation is determined and as strong as ever. Every day at the ballpark is a celebration of this great game, but today it's extra special. It's Mother's Appreciation Day here at the ballpark. All the young ladies coming into the yard get the scarf compliments of the folks at Strowman's. It's going to be a gorgeous afternoon for baseball as we celebrate Mother's Day in the final game of this three-game series between the Bills and the Padres. Hi, everybody. I'm John McCarthy, along with Chris Wheeler. Happy Mother's Day. We hope everyone is enjoying themselves, no matter where it is that they're celebrating this afternoon. Today, the Phillies will celebrate the return of Cole Hamels, and they're hoping that he can pick up right where he left off last Sunday night. Well, he's been their most consistent pitcher, Tom, no doubt about it. Roy Halladay, he's really pitched well, but he just can't seem to pick up a win. Cole, on the other hand, has been able to. Who could forget this last start? Certainly got a lot of pub, especially after Cole talked about hitting Bryce Harper, and then did Zimmerman hit him on purpose? Sure looked like it, but that was the end of it right there, and then it Continued as we all know, but what a game he pitched against Washington last Sunday night in front of the whole nation. Had a great changeup, used his cutter effectively, just dominated the Washington Nationals. In fact, he was pitching so well in that game that he was going to go out and pitch the ninth inning after a strong eighth inning, but Phillies blew the game open in the top of the ninth inning and he only went the eight. This is what he's done in his last four starts. The Phillies have won his last five starts. Unlike what's happening with Roy Halladay, the Phillies seem to win when Cole goes out there and they score some more runs for him. And that certainly is really, really important because they don't do that for Doc. Yeah, one of the big issues that Doc has had is that the Phillies haven't put up a whole lot of offense, as Wheels just alluded to. And last night, well, last night was the same old story. Same old story was kind of a microcosm of what's been going on right now. It's a shame they get opportunities late in games, these tight games, and they're just not able to score. They had gift wrapped a couple runs for them here in this inning, but then Hunter Pence, who's just struggling right now with runners in scoring position, pops up. And then Ty Wigginton, who's in a funk also offensively. Little flinch there by Bartlett at shortstop. Victorino just out. Then in the ninth inning with Jimmy Rollins at second, Shane Victorino strikes out. And then here's Hunter Pence again on a high fastball. He goes down on strikes. So this is the team offense this season where they go in as far as National League ranking. Pinch hitting, well, they haven't had a whole lot of that. Extra base hits way, way down, and I think that's pretty obvious. Runners on third, less than two outs, just not able to produce them. And runners in scoring position, very poor in this series. You know, you get a little confused sometimes. You see their run totals can be high, but then they score, they'll score 13 in a game and lose. What they do is they score two or three runs in a lot of games, and it's hard to win consistently that way. Yeah, how about one run or less in 10 games so far this year? for the Phillies. Well, they'll look for a little offense this afternoon. They'll also look for Cole Hamels to have a big day. And Jeff Supa, the veteran, is back with the uh, Padres in his third start of the year. He's 2-0 with an earned run average just under one. Well, with Mother's Day comes warm temperatures. That's right. Make sure you keep lathered up as we get ready for game three between the Padres and the Phillies. Phillies baseball. it is that you are celebrating again from all of us happy mother's day
celebrating Mother's Day with the bases, of course, and the players wearing not only the wristbands, but also the ribbon on their the chest of their uniforms. A number of the players will be wearing the pink Mother's Day bats. And obviously a lot of moms in the ballpark today. They receive those great scarfs. Give it away. Compliments of Strowman's. It's Strowman's Mother's Appreciation Day here at the ballpark as the Phillies and the Padres wind down this three-game series. Let's take a look at the Padres lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at center field, Cameron Maven, then Kristen Orfia and Yonder Alonso. The number four hitters, Jesus Guzman, Nick Hundley bats fifth, James Darnell sixth, and the bottom third of Perino, Bartlett, and Supon. And they'll face Phillies left hitter Cole Hamels, who's coming off a five-game suspension, but let's face it, he didn't miss anything. No, and he got an extra day's rest out of it. Uh, there are the numbers on Cole. He has really pitched well this year. That game he pitched last Sunday night in Washington, he was just outstanding from start right through the eighth. He could have pitched the ninth. A little extra rest, probably a good thing. Well, the first pitch of the day to Cameron Maben is low, so we're underway. One ball and no strikes. Sometimes you wonder about that with guys that they come out and the command's going to be a little off. Are they a little strong and their, their stuff is up in the zone? You know, you don't expect it to affect Cole Hamill. Certainly don't. Certainly hope not. Hamill's overall 4-1, and one, an earned run average of 2.45. 44 strikeouts in 40 in the third. 7 for 22 against him is Cameron Maben. Who had a big double in yesterday's ball game. That turned out to uh, help the Padres win the game. It started at the seventh. He came around a score and a sacrifice fly off the bat of Guzman. And the Padres won it two to one. So one ball and two strikes the count to Cameron Maven. And a liner back through the middle, a base hit. It was a cutter that was up. And Maven has the first hit of the day for the Padres. Time now for our Nissan keys to the this afternoon's ball game. Beautiful afternoon. Mother's Day will win the series. You know, that's something they did so well the last few years and not so hot this year. And Supon's the kind of guy he's going to be out there trying to finesse the Phillies this afternoon. You have to make him get the ball up, get ahead to count on him, and get him to get it in the middle of the plate, and you can hit him. Winning the series, and then hopefully, if they take two from the Astros, they can have a 500 homestand. There's a bunt to the right side. Nobody's there right away, but Galvis comes over to clean up. It's 3 4 on the putout. Sacrifice will be successful. He is so aware of what to do on the diamond. Freddie Galvis, every time you watch, it seems like every game, you know, you have to think maybe they'll sacrifice here, but it kind of took you by surprise. See, because he's not showing it. And now here's Galvis. His responsibility is to break to first base if the ball's bunted. But he's bunting for a base hit as much as anything. Cole Hamels is not going to get there. Galvis does. Such awareness on the field. So one away, runner at second. Here's Yonder Alonso. And he takes low, one ball and no well, strikes. Well, there's times when you're out there as a second baseman, such an obvious bunt situation, you're thinking about going over there. But he didn't show that till late and bunted for a hit. And that can catch a second baseman flat footed sometimes. Right. But he's and he's not even a second baseman. That's what's so amazing about his instincts. Sometimes too on a play like that although it wasn't. That far away from the first base back the second baseman will come in and try to field it. Sure. Well Mayberry you know Mayberry was going after that thing immediately and Freddie saw that so he thought well I've got one place to go right now and that's beat that hitter to first base. One ball one strike the count there goes Maven pitches grounded foul. And it's one and two to Alonzo. Well, he had that stolen. Yonder Alonzo has uh, got a nine game hitting streak going. He's third in the National League in doubles with 11. And you see his numbers with runners in scoring position. The eight for his last 15 is all part of what has been a, a red hot stretch for him. He is 17 for his last 41 overall. That pitch is a little outside, so two balls and two strikes to him. Cole Hamels goes for strikeouts a lot of times. This part in the count with changeups. Hitter's still thinking he's in a fastball count, and he throws changeup and fools him. Well, there was a curveball from Hamels. And it remains even two of two. He threw a breaking ball that time. 
There's yeah. Guzman waiting on deck. He's got some pink wristbands, necklace. And of course, Yonder Alonso wearing the pink, using the pink bat at the plate. Swing and a miss. He got him. Sounded like it may have tipped it to the glove of Schneider. It was a changeup. First well, strikeout for Hamels. That's the pitch we thought he was going to throw the pitch prior to that. Because he throws a lot of 2-2-3-2 two, two, two changeups for strikeouts. And there it is, and it just disappeared on Alonzo. Pink bat, black bat, brown bat, white bat, not going to hit that one. That strikeout, by the way, for Hamels, number 45 of the year. And now Guzman. Batty clean up today. They didn't start yesterday, but he had a big at bat. That sacrifice fly against Roy Halliday was not deep in shallow right field, but it produced the go ahead run. Now Hamill's trying to work out of a, a little jam here at the first. There's Doc. And some pretty good quotes after the game yesterday. First time in a Phillies uniform that the Phillies have lost five straight starts. And Doc said it's not the run support. It's just not winning games. That's frustrating for everybody. That's really the bottom line. And there are a lot of different reasons for that. He said he was uh, showing some emotion after the Padres took the lead. And he said he's not going to apologize for that emotion. Just off the inside corner. Two and one to Guzman. That line yesterday right there is good enough to win any ball game. Yeah. That's an understatement. Think about the losses. Or the runs he's given up. I mean, if the Braves game aside, the other four during this stretch, he's barely given up anything. Right. The one bad game. Unfortunately, that's a game where they scored all those runs and wound up losing anyway. That's baseball. Well, Charlie Manuel kind of said that last night. He said, but there again, it's hard to explain baseball sometimes. That's what makes it such a strange and beautiful game. It's hard to figure out. Guzman walks to put runners on first and second here in the first. So the first walk of the day for Hamels, who does not walk many. So runners on first and second with two outs here at the top of the first. Hundley pulls it towards shortstop. Rollins goes the short way to second. The side is retired. So Hamels needs 17 pitches to get through the first. He leaves a couple onto the bottom of the first. The Padres nothing and the Phillies coming up. Look at the Phil starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at shortstop, Jimmy Rollins. Watt Pierre bat second. Shane Victorino hits third, followed by Hunter Pence and Ty Wigginton. John Mayberry is uh, over at first base. He'll bat sixth. In the bottom of third of Galvis Schneider, 
and Cole Hamels. Brian has good numbers against Supon. That's who the pitcher is today. Right-hander Jeff Supon, the 37-year-old who spent all of last year at AAA after all of his major league wins. Hard to believe. His first major league season back in 1995 with Boston. Minor league free agent signed in February. As Tom said, spent last year at AAA. He's a smart, veteran, right-handed pitcher. Phillies have had really good luck, though. He's lost his last six decisions to the Phillies, and his teams are 0-8 in his last eight starts against them. Well, here's Jimmy Rollins to lead it off, and Rollins takes high. It's 1-0. He'll top out at 87 miles an hour, maybe. I mean, that fastball there was at 84. Yeah, I think that's what we had him on the scouting report. But he moves it around to throw sinkers, sliders. You know, he just makes it up. He got hit really hard at two triple A starts too. But then they called him up and he's been very good in his two major league starts. His numbers at triple A 12.15 earned run average and no one won a record. And there's his first strike of the day. The luck of McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Carolyn Rimby of Warminster. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game. The Carolyn will win two hundred dollars. Supon is a former second round pick in 1993 made it to the majors from double A with the Boston Red Sox. He was their prize prospect. Rollins hooks one deep to right field going back to North the gone home run for Jimmy Rollins his 38th career leadoff home run and it's his first of the year the Phillies take a one nothing lead. One of the things we're talking now uh, with Scott Palmer behind the pinstripes today, the pregame show is that Jimmy hasn't had a whole lot of extra base power this year. And one of these games he's due to lead off with a home run and, you know, give him a real offensive jolt. Well, he got that ball down the strike zone, hit it out of the ballpark. That and, really helps. And Carol and Ribby of Warminster, you've won 200 hours. Compliments to the McDonald's home run jackpot. Jimmy had gone 136 at bats. Without a home run. That was number 136 right there. Yeah. And the longest drought to start a year was 155 for him. Supon had not given up a home run in his first two starts in his 10 innings of pitching. Only the second run that he's given up. Pierre slaps it foul. One ball and one strike. Oh, what a one handed catch in the sweet level down there. Wow. Made it seem like he had it all the way. Made it look easy. The air back to the box, and Supon will make the play for the first out. So one away, that'll bring Victorino to the plate. I mentioned last year, Supon spent all of 2011 in AAA with the Royals. Surprising that there wasn't an opportunity or two for the Royals to use him in the big leagues, but he was 11 and 8 at AAA with a lofty 4.78 earned run average. Well, he's always been a guy who gives up hits and runs, but he wins. And that's why he's been uh, a pitcher that teams have wanted for a long time. Victorino, 4 for 8 in the series, takes a ball inside. It's 1 0. Nothing is a hitter that you're uncomfortable with. Uh, that he makes you uncomfortable up there. He just has always been able to hit his spots. See Shane's numbers overall 259 with five home runs. Phillies uh, out of the shoot here are being very patient with Supon. Well, that's a way to work him. You talked about that in the scouting report that you know you want him to get in the fastball counts and hope he'll throw some. Make sure that Supon at one time was a prized prospect for the Boston Red Sox. The Red Sox had a couple of guys coming through their system at about the same time. It was Supon, Carl Pavano, and another right hander by the name of Brian Rose. And none, none really panned out to be the number ones that everybody anticipated. Pavano was probably the closest to that. But all were very good prospects coming through their system. Supon now with 140 wins and 143 losses.
Shane Victorino needed a pitcher his height right now. He had a hit. Supon at 6 2 made himself about 6 5 right there. Takes a hit away from that ball was hit hard enough to get through the middle. Well, now two outs. Here's Hunter Pence, who has not had a very good series. That's an understatement. He's 0 for 6 with three walks, but he's left nine runners on base. And he hits that curveball toward third, backhanded by Darnell. Long throw in time. Wow, what a play! That was an incredible throw from the rim of the infield by rookie James Darnell. 5 3 on the put out. The side is retired, but the good news is Jimmy Rollins has hit his first home run of the year and has given the Phils a 1 0 lead. And that'll take us to the top of the second. Market game live online or on your favorite device in HD quality. Go to Phillies.com for more details. Nick Hundley, or excuse me, James Darnell leads it off here in the second. And he skies one to straightaway center. Shane Victorino makes the catch, one away. Well, this is Mother's Appreciation Day here at the ballpark and all around Major League Baseball. They are celebrating. You see Joe Blanton earlier today with uh, Barbie Brown from the United States uh, Marines. And she was honored today as part of Major League Baseball's program with Susan G. Coleman, breast cancer research. And Greg Murphy is with Barbie Brown. I am indeed uh, Gunner Sergeant Barbie Brown of the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, thank you for being with us. Congratulations. Uh, you found out a couple weeks ago that you were going to be honored today as part of the honorary Batgirl program here at Major League Baseball. How was that all about? Um, it was pretty exciting. It was cool. Talk a little bit about uh, you're obviously going through uh, treatments for breast cancer diagnosed in 2011 and uh, I just asked you before we started to talk and you said everything's going well. Tell us how, tell us how your treatment's going and where you're being treated. Um, I'm being treated at uh, Walter Reed uh, Naval National Medical Center in Bethesda with the uh, Wounded Warriors and I went through chemo uh, surgery radiation and um, everything's going good now so. So God willing it you were in Afghanistan uh, when you were diagnosed with the breast cancer uh, so they brought you home but you said you're still on active duty and you would return to active duty when you're 100 percent right. Yes that's right I'm right now I'm just staying home and maintain you know being healthy and uh, you know staying active and as soon as I'm well enough to go back to work um, that's what I'll do. And most importantly you get a chance to spend Mother's Day with, with your kids here at the ballpark. Yes that's right. <laughs> Barbie we appreciate everything that you do and uh, thank you so much for taking some time with us. Thank you very much. Good luck with everything. <laughs> Tom back to you. All right Murph thank you very much. Major League Baseball introduced the honorary Batgirl program for Mother's Day in 2009. And as we mentioned it's in conjunction uh, with the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Research Center. There's so many events that are going on. In fact there's one going on or one that went on, went on in Center City today. Uh, and it's all part of what Major League Baseball is trying to do to promote breast cancer research. And the same thing uh, during Father's Day uh, with prostate cancer research. 
And Barbie Brown, who was originally from Scranton, uh, was selected as part of this program. And a great honor for her and for her family to get to enjoy a game here at Citizens Bank Park. The race for the cure took place earlier today in downtown the 5K run walk. It was the 22nd annual. Yeah that's that's a great event last week in Washington went over there had the night game there went over to Washington last week just do some walking around sightseeing on Sunday and they had it in Washington yeah. last week. Well you see the players some of the players using these pink bats uh, including Andy Perino who is ahead three balls and two strikes it's part of MLB's uh, going to bat against breast breast cancer program. The use of these bats as Hamels walks his second hitter was implemented in 2006 and if you go to MLB.com following today's game you can bid on these game use bats that some of the players are using all around baseball today and the money raised in those bids uh, goes to the uh, Susan G. Coleman Breast Cancer Research Center. Which is always a great a great function for the for Major League Baseball to be part of. Well, it's great that MLB's gotten involved in these, in these great causes, charities, uh, make people aware of some things that you can do to try and prevent them, some things from happening, and heaven forbid when they do, the treatments that are available. Jason Bartlett is behind 0 and 1, and he takes it side and low. It's one ball and one strike. Cole is is he? Had, I think he has real good. Stuff this afternoon right now is command is just not what you're used to seeing from him and that doesn't mean it can't, can't pick it up real fast because his stuff is good. There's a change up hit foul. And it's one and two Bartlett as you saw has been struggling during the month of May His average overall at 141. He did have a hit uh, in last night's ball game. It's the guy who's won for his last 20. That's struggling. Out of play, and it remains one and two. Really came inside there, probably with a cut fastball. Now, you know, it, so many times. Pitchers that have Hamill's stuff and location then will throw change up away if they have one. And he has such a great change up because they've just made him so aware inside. Tried the change up, but it faded outside, and it's two and two. Yeah, he just, just not quite there yet at this point in the game. He's not getting the swing and the miss stuff that he'll probably get as the game goes along. His pitch count's also a little bit high, and that includes an out on one pitch in this inning. His last start against the Padres was back on the 20th of April when he went six innings allowed one run struck out four and he strikes out a, another one as Bartlett goes down swinging second strike out of the day. That's what you see from Cole Hamels and I don't know what the stats are in the league but he just seems to be a guy that there are a lot of swings and misses against because he has pitches that really full hitters he change up change up and then he'll throw a fastball 93 mile an hour guys going to be late on it. Budweiser through the walk off the hero program will donate five thousand dollars to folds of honor for every Phillies walk off win. Please join Budweiser and the Phillies in honoring those who keep us safe as Hunter Pence will keep this inning safe by taking that fly ball from Jeff Supon to wrap up the second. No runs no hits one man left middle of the second Phillies one Padres nothing.
giving away five iPads in five days. All you have to do is watch tomorrow from 6 until 8 for your chance to win. Eye opener, a different kind of morning show. <laughs> a lot of folks want to get themselves on television. That young lady, she has seen enough. Having some ice cream. Go to the bottom of the second. Was you hear that promo about the uh, free iPad? Yeah. Yeah, the, well, I was just thinking that the boys would love to have heard that. In fact, aren't they about ready for a new one? Well, Larry has two, which he's operating each and every game. Right. So uh, he may need another one. What are they? What's the highest it goes? Four? Three or four? I don't. I think it's iPad three. Well, well, then he has two and three. So he needs number one. Now he has one where he uses for his score sheets. And then the other one he uses for just general research. <laughs> it is uh, it's all part of what could be a great TV sitcom. <laughs> Ty Wigginton is the batter. It's one ball one strike. The best is when Sarge is trying to explain to him different passwords and things like that. You come in our office. There, there, there's no part of it about being a great. It, it, it is a great sitcom. Day after day. Wigginson asked for time. There's there. See, see there. There's the two of them. He's really using them. <laughs> a lot of knowledge Plus coming from he's them. He's got the iPhone there too. There's a grounder foul. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's a monitor there too. We have to show right. this. See, there's the monitor. There, right. there, there's the iPad. There's that. Yeah. Then he <laughs> get all this stuff working here. <laughs> And then there's that. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's some great stuff. Oh, man. Two and two to Wigginton, a 264 hitter. Next thing I know, he'll be over here saying, don't make me part of your stick. <laughs> uh, and then. There's the other part of the stick. Well, that, that, he's just using that. You know, that's that's all he's got there. He's right. just working that right there. That's it. And he's got a light on. Right. And he's shrugging his shoulders over there saying, yeah, they're talking about us. I don't know what they're saying. Wigginton hits it hard to third. Darnell takes a half a step Whoa. back and then sells the throw. Now Wigginton will get second. That ball went down into the well. Well, the Padres, as we've mentioned before, are not a very good fielding team. I guess Darnell needs to throw from all the way back on the grass and just wing it over there. And he'll be right on the bag like he ended last time. That was such a, an easier play that he just had right there. Yeah, very easy. You know, he had a glove, you know, a crow hop right there. Take your crow hop Whoop. and let it go. But airmail, look out, Sammy. <laughs> Sam Perlazzo's diving, out of, diving for cover on that one. So a runner in scoring position now for John Mayberry. His average uh, 244 with a home run and six runs batted in. He's never faced Supon. John has hit over 300 in his last 18 games. In fact, 316 during that span. Takes a curve inside and low. 1 0. Supon is one of those guys that you know what you're trying to do here. Trying to push a ball the other way, but it's. Oh, here we go. Here comes the technical advisor. Oh, yeah. Sarge has an iPad, too. Right. Right. Oh, man. Talking about blind leading the blind. Oh, yeah, that's they great. Too. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the ever evolving skit, which includes, which includes oh. Sarge asking where the app store is. Where's the app store? <laughs> he, needed, he wanted to go to MapQuest and run off directions to it. And then he was talking about his phone being an iDroid. Yeah. I'm telling you that room that we have in there, you just sit there and listen. <laughs> Two and zero, oh, the count to Mayberry. Mayberry just missed that one. Towering fly ball down the left field line. Will it hook foul and out of play? Oh, he made the catch. Guzman did. I think that went right through somebody's hands. It came back, but I think it right, went right through a fan's hands, and Guzman was able to make the grab. Too bad the guy didn't touch. Well, no, if he touched it, would have been fan interference because they're reaching over. Somebody's reaching there. He couldn't quite tell whether or not he had a shot at it. Oh, not, one away. Not much wind here today. It just drifted back. 
And the point I was trying to make is this guy makes you roll stuff over if you're a right handed batter because he doesn't throw hard. And Mayberry right there. I, they may have just wanted him to swing anyway instead of just give himself up. But he's a tough guy to hit the ball to the right side on for a right handed hitter because of the lack of velocity. Here's Freddie Galvis who has hit in three straight five for 15 on the homestand. And a fly ball to left center field easier play for Guzman. And now there are two outs yeah, and there it becomes more difficult. They are gift wrapping another run for you like they did last night. Just trying to take advantage of. Well the Phillies will say goodbye to the Padres today and then welcome in the Houston Astros for a two game series tomorrow at 705 and then Tuesday at 105 tomorrow. All fans will receive the free Liberty Bell cap. Again, that's everybody. So go to Phillies.com and get your tickets. Tomorrow's night is sponsored by Teva. It's Teva Respiratory Asthma Awareness Night. Phils and the Astros in game one of two. Here's Brian Schneider, 222 hitter. Better takes low. Brian is nine for 18 against Supon. Supon may be thinking right now, well, I don't want this guy to hurt me with two outs and a runner at second, but guy on deck is a pretty good hitter. Cole Hamels. There he is. Pink bat and all. He's pitching around him. At least those first two pitches are way off the plate, which is what you would think a veteran would try to do here. Now Schneider being a catcher could think now nah, they, they may just be deacon me a little bit. Maybe he'll give me something to hit here. I got to be ready for something in the in the middle of the plate. If it's there, go after it. There you go. It was something off speed, and whether it was a strike or not. Pitch around. If it is, it's fine with the Phillies, you know, because you turn the lineup over. Give Hamill's a chance to hit. Yeah, give him a chance to hit, and you've turned the lineup over. But Black won his 400th game last night as the manager of the Padres. It's three balls and one strike now to Schneider. And he loops one towards center. That'll drop for a base hit. Wiggins it'll coast home. Maybin Mayber, was way back in center field, so it's an easy RBI single, and it's two nothing Phillies. Well, great job. You see, Supon's talking to his catcher right now as he walks back. Like that wasn't a strike he just hit. Well, it looked like a breaking ball that he threw Brian, and he fought something off there and got the base hit. And what it looked like it was a pitch around. Oh, he got way too much of the plate there. Especially for a veteran guy, and a good job by Brian Schneider to, if he got a strike, take a hack at it. So Wigginton scores the game's second run. It's an unearned run. And Hamels will get a chance to bat here in the bottom of the second. And Hamels chops it back toward the middle. Perino will just run right to the second base bag. His momentum carried him that way. Phillies settle for one, an unearned run. On a base hit, they leave one. Brian Schneider gets the RBI. We get to go to the third. The fills up two to nothing.
can log on to phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information, and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Wheels, here we go. Think outside the box of this one. Uh -oh. Name the three other pro sports teams other than the Padres to draft former Padre and Hall of Famer Dave Winfield. The answer will be revealed in the seventh inning. Well, two are really easy. The third one's a... I can't picture him on skates. You think he played uh played a little ice hockey? Could have. He went to Minnesota. That is true. But I'm not using uh, that's not a guess. It's a great question. It is good. It's a I trick question, too. Oh, of course it is. Think outside the box. That was a hint. Here's Cameron Maben. He singled his first time up. He takes low. Philly's up 2 nothing. A run of the first, a run of the second. Brandon Schneider's RBI single gave the Phils the 2 nothing lead. Now the Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Mets have taken a 1 nothing lead over the Marlins. Kirk Neuenheis has scored a run. That game's in the top of the fourth. Carlos Zambrano is pitching for Miami. Jonathan Nice for the Mets. Zambrano's been really good. He has been good. I watched some of the game today uh, back at the office, and his fastball was at 91 92. Yeah. It's well, not, it not the way it used to be. No. But maybe he's got his head together and he realizes what he is now. The other storyline about New York is that Andy Pettit is pitching today for the Yankees. Making his return. By the way, an update from the Mets and the Marlins. Daniel Murphy is playing first today. Picked up an RBI to make it 2 nothing. It's raining in Cincinnati, so the start of that game delayed with the Nationals and the Reds. And a called strike three. Ah, the inside quarter with a 92 fastball. Third strikeout for Hamels. Maven did not like that call. We better shuffle off to the dugout because start chirping about balls and strikes. You may not stay in the game too long. Yeah, umpires will give a little warning, like, okay, that's enough, and that's what Dale Scott said. Carlos well, Ruiz moved a little bit, but or I mean Brian Schneider moved a little bit, but it looked, I don't know, tough to tell. Chris Dorfia sacrificed his first time up. And he takes strike one. It's 0 and 1. Talk about Hamels and his swings and misses. 87 coming into the game today. Four before this inning. Eighth most in Major League Baseball. So he is definitely a swing and a miss guy, especially when he's on. That ball was rocketed right past Wigginton for an extra base hit. The Northfield will get to second. Second hit of the day for the Padres. First extra base hit. There you go. Swing and a miss. Leaders among the starting pitchers for the Phillies. Hamels. And Halliday, Blanton. Not surprising with Worley has a lot of strikes. <laughs> but so many called strikes. I surprised Cliff Lee was second from the bottom. But you know what with the injury he hasn't really gotten going. Right. The way he uh, will. When you see when you see pitchers up in that 20 some percent. They're usually going to be pretty effective because that's a lot of times guys are not putting the ball in play. Now that now you there as you see Lee there there are certain pitchers you know that they don't want that. They want the ball put in play early. They're contact type pitchers. Swing and a miss two at one. So they want to put in play early and get outs quick. Yonder Alonzo struck out his first time up. One of three strikeouts for Hamels. Just outside a little bit, and it's three and one. This is Hamels 13th career start against the Padres, his hometown team. He was uh, seven and two coming into this game against San Diego, and oddly, he's walked his third batter of the game. He only walked six coming into this game. I think he thought that 
pitch was a pretty good pitch. He liked both those uh, two pitches away, but you know Dale Scott setting up inside, and uh, you know that outside corner just a little bit off it isn't there. Well now Jesus Guzman who walked his first time up. Billy set up for two. There go the runners. The pitch is taken for a strike. The throw to third not in time. So there are two in scoring position. Norfia had a great jump and Alonzo followed. Yeah that's just done on on the, the pitcher. They they have something they they figured out on Cole Hamels on first move. And uh, the lead guy is the key to it. And then Tom said the, the other guy just trails it. Not black like that. Phillies play the infield back. They'll concede the run. CB Buckner says uh, Guzman went around and it's 0 2. And here's where you need that swing and a miss. Phillies are conceding a run right now on a ground out. And just a little high. Oh boy. I really tried to surprise him there with a curveball. I think he did. He surprised everybody. It's a little high. Yep. Rounder toward third. Wigginson charges, scoops it on the short hop. A run will score. 5 3 on the put out, and it's a 2 1 game. So an RBI for Guzman, his second of the series. That's a good job by Guzman. Puts the ball in play. Wigginson makes the correct play there. Because uh, when you're playing the infield back like that, you're conceding a run. They're going on contact. You throw that home with a run like that, you might hit him right in the back. The run's going to score. The inning's alive. Base runners all over the place. You take the out and give him the run. So now Hundley, who grounded out to short his first time up, takes a fastball at the knees. It's 0 1. Number foul and two. Padres catching position has not produced a whole lot this year between Hundley and John Baker. Although Baker had a couple hits in yesterday's game. Big hits. One of those uh, two home runs that Hundley's hit is against the Phillies. He's got a runner at third and two outs. No balls, two strikes the count. And a grounder softly hit to shortstop. Rollins gets to it fast and the inning is over. Padres do score a run though on the ground out by Guzman. We've completed two and a half onto the bottom of the third. The lead is one. And by Anheuser Busch, smooth Bush beer and easy drinking Bush Light. Some of the moms enjoying today's ball game here at Citizens Bank Park at the 
great giveaway, which they really don't need to use today, but they'll use at some point this year. The blue scarf, which is a beauty. And the day got off on a good note for the Phils when Jimmy Rollins led off the bottom of the first inning. That pitch down in the zone. Jimmy always been a really good low ball hitter, especially left-handed. And just golfed it into the, the second row out there in right field. For that home run and every one hit by the Phils this year, one tree will be planted by the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society as part of Home Runs for Trees. Go to phillies.com slash red goes green for more information about that initiative. So Rollins will start off the third, takes a curve, but it's 1-0. Rollins, Pierre, and Victorino. That one's to left. Two pitches, one away here in the third. And that'll bring Juan Pierre to the plate. You know, every year the Phillies have this drawing where they put the players' names in, and whoever's name is drawn. They bring that player's mom to the ballpark for Mother's Day. And Juan Pierre's mom, Derry, was selected this year. And Juan presented her with some flowers. He also presented his wife, Liz, with some flowers, too. Accompanying his mom to the field is Philly's outfield. Juan has always been one of the more hard, one of the, the hardest working players in Major League Baseball. So his mom gets a chance to enjoy a weekend here in Philadelphia to watch him play. First year in the major leagues, 2000. That's how long he's been around. There's Juan's family there. Pierre takes a strike. It's 0 2. He grounded back to Supon his first time up. You wondered about Pierre's average and whether he uh, is in the top 10 in the National League. He's not. He would be, but does not have enough plate appearances. His 341 average would put him toward the middle of the pack. Still shy of uh, guys like David Wright, who's around the 400 mark. 402 is the play as play began today. David Wright, you can see early in the year, isn't pulling off the way that he did for a while. He's not pull happy, and they say one of the reasons is the shorter dimensions in his new ballpark. He's hitting the ball more to right and right center the way he did when he first came up. Got a lot of home runs at Shea. Line drive, base hit for Pierre. Pierre hustling. He's thinking two out of the box. So a one out single. And one with the second end of the series. They keep chipping away, pick up some runs, and have a comfortable game. Whatever that is. Anymore. Victorino also grounded back to Supon his first time up. What if Pierre's over at first base going, come on, man, what's going on? Yeah, hurry up. <laughs> either you're going to throw over, either you're going to step off, or you're going to throw the ball to the plate. And Supon accomplished exactly what he wanted to do there, and that's frustrate a potential base stealer. There's a lot of ways to do that. One of them is just hold the ball the way he is. Frustrate the base dealer, frustrate the hitter. Yeah, because he really had a pitch to hit there. A little slider right in the middle of the plate. Good pitch to pull. All open on the right. Juan has stolen five bases this year. We saw that note before 559 stolen bases for his career. Victorino toward right center, playable for Maven. And there are two outs. 
And here comes Hunter Pence. Pence grounded out to third his last time up. And Ike has found his way out toward left field. Hunter's average down to 248. It's partly because of this home set. He's two for 20 on this homestand. And he's one for 23 against the Padres. They thought he might be going. They thought Pierre might be going. So the pitch out, it's 1-0. Oh. Yeah, as you talk about whether or not they, they, he has a green light or not, or whether or not he thinks he can go, this is a great time to go because they're rarely going to double pitch out. It's a good hitter spot right now to drive a ball somewhere. You don't have to worry about a line drive double play. Good time to run. And Pence was thinking that too. He took a pitch for him. Right down the middle. What happens when you're struggling? You swing at the balls and take the strikes, as Whitey used to say. There's a lot of that going on with Pence, unfortunately, for him. Center field, playable for Maven. A few steps from the track, Phillies get a hit. They leave one. We've completed three. We go to the fourth here at Citizens Bank Park, but the Phillies hang it on to a one-run lead. W.B. Mason. Another sellout here at the ballpark. Phillies commit to this game with 219 consecutive sellouts. A gorgeous day. We go to the fourth. It'll be Darnell, Perino, and Jason Bartlett. Phillies hanging on to a 2 1 lead. And the first pitch from Hamels is in there for a strike. It's 0 1. Darnell fly to Victorino his first time up. Seven days since Hamill's last pitched. Obviously had to serve the five game suspension plus the off day. 
on Thursday. Got a chance to throw aside. But when the Phillies played, he wasn't allowed to be around. He's kind of finding his way through here today. Is that punishment? That's what Major League Baseball's punishment is. You can work out, but you can't be around. Can't be around your teammates. During the game itself. Oh, I see. 2 2 pitch. Opposite way, a foul ball. And it remains two balls and two strikes. I don't think it'll be a lot of ill effects uh, with him pitching. If anything, it might be a little bit too strong, but having thrown aside, he's sure he's learned how to harness that by now. A little extra Mother's Day gift there. And another foul ball it remains two at two. But I guess we get into, you know, wondering about pitchers, starting pitchers who are creatures of habit. When they have an extra day, that's probably good sometimes. When they have two extra days, how good or bad can that be? And I think because we're in such a rhythm as fans that they're supposed to go every fifth day. Well, there's some truth to that. I mean, obviously, but I think guys like Cole Hamels and not only that, veteran pitchers, I don't think it affects them as much as it, it would some. Again, the 2 2. Swing and a miss. He got him with a changeup. Fourth strikeout for Hamels. That is about as filthy as can be. He has that changeup where it's actually fading away a little bit and almost as if it's a screwball. That's a very difficult uh, pitch to hit. Almost impossible, as a matter of fact. Well, and obviously he's uh, he's trying to find that rhythm. Now, let's ask uh, ask a question. Let's wrap something up. Here. Sure. Earlier we were discussing Larry's iPad, and then all of a sudden, bam, you showed up on the on the spot. I was trying to get the I score to put uh, the lineup down, but uh, when Larry was helping me with it, <laughs> which he does not say. There you go. Uh, I was on... Uh, he had me put it in 2011. It right. didn't work, and I've already paid for it. So I was trying to figure out a way to get my money back to put it on a 2012, and he told me just to get out of there. He, we, we'd talk about it later. All right, so we thought, we assumed that you were tech support. In reality, he was tech support? Right then, yes, even though I was going, uh, yeah, to see him with it. All right, so, Larry, Larry and Sarge, and I, I guess JJ too, they're doing the computerized score sheet. Right. Right. Exactly. They're testing it out for all of us. Well, I got. I got to tell you though. He gave <laughs> <laughs> the double win. Well, that's when he told me. You know, I forgot. I forgot he was on, and Fransky was looking and staring at me like, "Are you kidding me?" Swing and a miss. Another strikeout. Five strikeouts. The best look though was Joe Gaines, uh, our engineer at radio, uh, Smoker Joe Gaines, who uh, who was laughing in the background. Oh, there's that uh, screwball there again. I'm calling it a screwball, but that's his changeup. You can tell. He gets that ball in a good spot and just disappears when the hitter gets ready to swing. Now, with two outs, here's Jason Bartlett. All right, now let me just wrap the whole conversation up because sure. you don't have the iPad with you to keep score. So are you keeping score privately on the iPad? I just explained to you that I had it 2011. It right. has to be 2012. Therefore, I didn't have it. I was panicking. I ran oh, in there. I got you. And he wished me off with two hands. I got you. Not just one, but I guarantee you before it's, uh, the season's over with, we're going to be set up right here with everything going on. I hope so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Although it's much more entertaining that you're not set up for it right now. <laughs> really? You're going there, huh? Well, one of my favorite days is when I walked in and you were talking to Larry about the password, making sure you put the username and password in right. Oh, boy. Fly ball center field. Victorino coming in. And he makes the catch. A one, two, three, fourth inning for Cole Hamels. Two strikeouts and a fly ball to center. That's pretty good pitching by Cole. We got to the bottom of it, folks. It's all about the wave off.
purchase comes with Toyota Care. Buy Xfinity, the official HD triple play provider of the Bills. And buy Chevrolet. See your local Chevy dealer. Visit ChevyDealer.com. Last of the fourth inning. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Beautiful day. Well, really? Moms get everything, don't they? And rightfully so. Yeah, good day for some hits. I'm sure moms around Philadelphia are hoping for the for the hits as an extra gift. A lot of moms at the uh, the game today was doing a show with JJ earlier. They were all coming up. Moms, daughters. Ty Wiggins it takes outside. It's one and zero. Are you doing the radio show downstairs with uh, Jim Jackson? Wiggins had reached on an error his first time up, scored on a single by Schneider. So we got a miss, one ball, one strike. Note in your book. Talked a little bit about uh, about that. Talked about you know, the Phillies and some of the struggles and whether or not they'd be able to come back or just sustain until the big piece is back in the lineup. We decided, yeah, they could. Popped him up behind the mound. And Bartlett, the shortstop. Will retire Wigginton. Well, next weekend the Phillies will head into interleague play against the Boston Red Sox. There are some limited seats that have now become available for Friday the 18th at 7:05 start and Sunday the 20th at 135. All fans 14 and under will receive the WB Mason collectible truck. So hurry on and get your tickets now at Phillies.com. Here's the uh, upcoming interleague schedule. Against the Red Sox and the Rays here, and then on the road against the Orioles, the Twins, and the Blue Jays. Get to see uh, Target Field. Haven't seen that yet. And go back down to Camden Yards. Haven't been down there in a while. As Mayberry takes low, it's one and zero. Tickets against the Red Sox are always some of the toughest to get here at the ballpark. So. That's good news for some fans that there are some seats available for that series. Kind of gets into those habits once he starts to get a few hits. He doesn't become as aggressive meaning that he'll take a strike or two and I. Always felt hit or stay with your strength no matter what it might be. You know, certain balls that if you connect with that usually you're going to hit them a long way. Especially against a guy like this. Okay to swing at that high fastball. Not able to throw the ball by you usually. There's the curve 70 miles an hour. That's Jamie Moyer range right there. He had it down in the zone and that's where he wants it. So you get less damage. Times you throw that pitch and it hangs up in the zone. Ball will travel a long way. Two balls, two strikes to count to Mayberry. That's uh, his fastball. That's 87, but he had it in a good spot, running in and tying Mayberry up. See if he continues to come in there with the fastball and maybe go away with his breaking pitch. He tried to tie him up a little bit. That was the change up that he tied him up with. It's three and two. Or attempted to tie him up. Yeah. Had some movement though. I mean, as long as that pitch has movement, very difficult for the hitter. To hit that pitch when it's straight, no matter how hard it is, becomes less difficult. Opposite way. He was retired four in a row, then he will face Freddie Galvis. Jeff Supot has won 16 games on two different occasions in the big leagues, and he was a pretty good major league pitcher during oh, yeah. his prime. Uh, pitch for the Cardinals. That's where he won the 16 games. Obviously, the Red Sox, the Pirates, the Brewers. As a hitter, though, you walk away after a game like this, and we're only in the fourth inning, but 
you probably sit there and say, man, I wish I had another chance against him. Oh, he can give you a, a comfortable over, meaning that not overpowering, and you put the ball in play, and after the game, you're over four, and you're wondering how that actually happened. I think when he came up with the Red Sox, they thought he'd be at least a 200 game winner for his career. But he started, this is his 414th career start. Hmm. Well, the mere fact that he went to the minor leagues and spent a whole year there and fought his way back, you have to admire that. Toughest thing for me. I mean, after being in the major leagues, getting a taste of it, having success, and then you got to go back down. I mean, you really got to have yourself together in the minor leagues to work yourself back up and to be in a starting rotation. Well, particularly when you're you're 37 years of age. You've had a lot. You've had success. Right. Right. Probably have made a good amount of money. You know he has a restaurant that he, he owns in Southern California that uh, has always been successful. But he must love the game so much that he just doesn't want to give it up. Most players that play the game. I mean you never know. Especially if you're able to be one of those players that you're playing every day or you're starting. Take a look at this. This is going to be smarting right off the foot. But you just never know. I mean, you feel like you you'll be able to play forever. I've always thought for managers that very difficult to manage a a falling star because the star always feels that they have it and that they're they're going to have another one or good two games or even more. Well, I guess if you can play, you know, people always wondered why Michael Jordan came back. But if you can play and if you you're not embarrassing yourself. Why not keep playing? Well, it's just something about, you know, the, the cheer of the crowd, uh, the one on one competition between the, the batter and the, and the pitcher. And there you go. One, two, three inning. He throws a change up down and away to Freddie Galvis. And Supon has retired the side in order. So he answers Hamill's one, two, three with a one, two, three of his own. That'll take us to the fifth. and a half men with the show's most interesting character catch the original Charlie episodes of two and a half men weeknights at six and six thirty followed by the Big Bang Theory on PHL 17 get a chance to enjoy a little uh, little Mother's Day here at the ballpark the youngsters day looks like it's winding down as Jeff Supon takes a strike to start the fifth Hamels has struck out five in this game so far. Oh, it to the count to Supon. <laughs> Foul 
fouls it away. Supon, not a bad hitting pitcher. He's always been a pretty good hitter throughout his career and some big hits. Grounder softly hits a Wigginton. And one away here in the fifth. Every time the Phillies retire the opposing team, one, two, three, Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports, giving you all your favorite sports all year long. Now Cameron Maven is one for two. Maven just signed a five year. Twenty five million dollar extension back in March. Right. What a lucky guy. You know and I get a thing you you pay players sometimes for potential. This is one of them and sometimes you you pay players for past performance. The ball was scorched off the mound. Rollins did have it for a moment, but it trickled out of his glove. He'll score a base hit, according to Jay Dunn. No, that's one of those plays there, do or die, and that speed will make you rush. Take a look at it. He gets right on top of the ball. He's that ball fairly, fairly hard. Jay will picks it, just not able to pick it clean to be able to get that throw. But you end up getting the hit because of the speed of Maven. Well, he's on with Denorfia now up. He doubled his last time up. Sarge, when do you stop paying for potential? Well, I was going to mention Albert Pujols was a guy that they they paid because he already had gone through it. But potential, I think they're always Tom will pay for that because you're projecting young players and you're trying to get them, you know, for a cheaper price. Well, five years at twenty five million. You see where he ranks as far as uh, Stolen bases go the last two years. I would have yeah. thought that they might be able to get him for less than that. And probably, but depending on the agent, you know, and the and the talk. But he's a player that's going to get better. Uh, he's learning. But right now, I mean, for me, it, I don't know all the circumstances. But you're right. Seems like they could have waited, but they tied him up. The player definitely is going to feel better and maybe he'll play a little bit more relaxed and they'll have a leadoff hitter like they want play center field good speed. Just needs to get on base a little bit more. Well he's a lifetime 255 hitter Maben is. 25 years old. Denorfi a swing and a miss The throw to second to try to get him is off the glove of Galvis. Now that'll be the 10th stolen base of the year for Maben. It's a good jump there. Yeah, he's got good stride. It's a straight steal. He didn't uh, look back at all. And in scoring position. Toward third, Maven off the second base bag goes back and they throw out to Norfolk. So two outs. And Hamels needs one more out to get out of this inning. Just to wrap this up, does it surprise you sometimes when teams play pay players for potential? Even if they haven't really well, produced much, this is what they've been doing. I mean, since almost the game has started, you look at a lot of the guys that are drafted. They're paid on potential. You know, when you sign that big uh, contract, that they're going to get there. Strasburg, you know, Bryce Harper. You know, these guys are paid there on potential, but you take out the guesswork out of it. Strasburg throws so hard, and you already see the way that a Bryce Harper is going to play. So. Uh, and he's got to the major leagues pretty pretty quick there that Bryce Harper. Would you guys as players ever have thought that somebody would have paid you at a young age for potential. Well I, I thought even back then a lot of guys were paid for potential Bob were Horner. Ex teammate uh, of mine exactly the same way. And talking about long term contracts. 
uh, is what you're talking about. And, yes, they are paid on, hey, these guys are going to be healthy and be able to produce. You know, the difficult choice for me would be a guy like an Albert Pujols who has had great years, but to invest that amount for that many years would give you something to think about, and he's one of my favorite uh, players of all time, for sure. Well, one ball and two strikes the count to Yonder Alonso. The pitch from Hamels outside, and it's two and two. Alonzo walked his first time or last time up struck out his first time up. This guy's going to be a good hitter. The only reason Cincinnati traded him is he was behind Bato at first base. Not going to get much time playing there with him. And he looks like he's going to be a, a fairly good hitter. That's one of those situations where. What a break for him to be able to go to a team like San Diego. Know that you're going to be in that lineup once you get in there. Pretty, nice good, pretty good catch by that gentleman in the first row of the Hall of Fame club. No matter where you are in the ballpark, when you catch a ball, you feel pretty good. Another foul ball up to that same area. Well, Hamels now has thrown 86 pitches. He has two outs here in the fifth. Kind of making them work some, fouling off pitches. Good fastball, Cole Hamels, 94. Got that one in on his hands a little bit. See if you can get something maybe out of the zone there and be able to get him out on that. Ninth pitch of the at bat. Outside with a wow. curve. It's <laughs> Guzman's on deck. Looper toward Galvis, who makes the catch, and the inning is over. The battle was won by Hamels. He was locked at a doozy with Yonder Alonso, and he gets him to finish up the fifth. Padres leave one in scoring position. We go to the bottom of the fifth here at Philly. The Astros will receive the great Liberty Bell cap. Compliments of Teva. Teva Respiratory Asthma Awareness Night here at the yard. Go to Phillies.com to purchase your tickets. There are some seats still available. So you can go there right now and get some tickets for the Phils 
and the Houston Astros Phillies will wrap up this homestand with two against Houston and then they go to Chicago for just two and then back home to take on the Red Sox. Bottom of the fifth it'll be Brian Schneider Cole Hamels Jimmy Rollins for the Phillies against Supon and Schneider launches one to right field it's hooking off the wall and it gets away from Denorfia. that's going to allow Schneider to get to second he's now 11 for 20 against Jeff Supon he, hope he, he hopes he never retires that's unbelievable we talked about there are certain pitchers sometime when you know and you see them you are just going to get hits and that is exactly what's happening with Brian Schneider as he drills his ball take a look at it swinging with a lot of confidence there no doubt about it there he actually hits that ball hits the bottom and he's hustling in the second safe at second safe and secure with New York life. So Hamels be up there to try to get Schneider over to third I would think with nobody out corners pinch in. He squares bunts back toward the box Supon has it looked at third. And the sacrifice is successful. Got to tell you, if he goes and throws right away, Brian Mayer is he out. Hasn't. Yeah. There's no doubt because he's not picking up speed. He's at one speed. Belt Supon got to the ball fairly early, but I thought when he took a look, it happened so quick. Take a look at it. Now there's the butt. Thought he could have actually got him right there. He's only halfway, and now he elects to throw that ball. The first base taking the sure out. I think sometimes pitchers get worried when it's a tag play like that, what would have been. But Hamels does his job. Rollins will hit with the infield in. Phillies up two to one. Rollins is homer today. He's also fly to left. Looking to hit a deep flying ball. It's not a base hit. Infield in. Be difficult to score him on the ground. Hooks that one towards second. Ooh, Carino makes a nice play. He's got a really strong arm, and they didn't go on contact, so Schneider decided to hold. Yeah, that's a situation where the runner is going to read the ball. If it goes through, he'll go. See Samuel actually talking with him. They might have had him on there where it was contact because he started to go kind of, but then he's reading it. Good play. That's why we talk about well, you're looking for a ball that you want in the air as opposed to on the ground. You know, there's certain situations in the game that dictate what you want to do when you're in that batter spot. Yeah, and if you're wondering about the arm, we said that he has a good arm. He has the best arm of anybody in the infield. Mm. Perino does. The air takes low. It's one and out. Yeah, that's like two. Again, pitchers that that can't throw the ball by you don't have to really. You can wait. You can get two strikes on you. And I'll take an RBI for an out any day of the week. But I want that more in a variety of that long or deep fly ball. Hard to do it, however, on a pitch that would be down. Slug bunt by Pierre fouled it away and it's one ball and one strike. I'm going to have to ask him about that. A little late on the slap and I guess he was trying to get it to the shortstop feeling that if he could get it there that he'd be able to to beat out the ball. are always big situations you look back in the game and you figure out where you could have gotten a run here or there 
at the end of the game, you start that's that's how you can figure out how you end up losing those ball games. You got to be able to tack on here in the major leagues. You're going to be successful. And the pitcher feels better. Manager feels better. Fans. There's a liner to right field, a base hit. Schneider will score easily. Pierre on his way to second. The Northia's throw is not in time. It's an RBI double. Well, Phillies lead it three to one. Trucks hit there for Rod Pierre. Picking up his teammate, Jimmy Rollins, there with a two out double. Boy, did he get around on that fastball, clearing his hips. Take a look at it. Watch it clear those hips as that ball goes down the right field line there. Challenging the arm as he goes in the second and running all the way. There's his mom, his family there are watching, and they've seen it before as he's got the base hit. Holding the breath as he gets in the second. There's that familiar clap. All right, now he's in scoring position for Victorino. Victorino is 0 for 2. Three well, runs now on five hits for the Phillies. Having your mom at the ballpark and Getting a clean base hit. Not only that, he's gotten two so far, but just to be in the major leagues, but to perform the way that Juan has, and say what you want about him, he just keeps getting on and keeps getting hits. Mom's proud, he's proud. Dorito rolls it over to second. And the side is retired. The Phillies get one. A double by Schneider followed three batters later by a double from Juan Pierre. So Pierre has his second hit of the day. He helps give the Phils a 3 1 lead as we go to the sixth. Phillies catcher has stepped up with his bat to start the month of May and is delivered in key spots. When Carlos Ruiz isn't swinging the bat, he is behind the dish, taking down would-be base stealers one after another, limiting Phillies opponents on the base paths. No matter the situation, Chooch always has a way to find the plate, and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Now more than ever, we're here for you every step of the way. Well, the Fanatic uh, brought some flowers to Phoebe today on Mother's Day. This is always a great act at the ballpark. And then he forgot it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Man, he is the best. Simply the best. Well, the best was when Phoebe was trying to get onto the, uh, the four-wheeler just prior to that little fall. We go to the six. Guzman hits it back toward the middle. That'll sneak uh, under the glove of Galvis. So he has a base hit to start the sixth. Phillies up three to one. Juan Pierre helped that with his RBI double, brought home Brian Schneider. It's a big run, and any time you get a hit with two outs, you consider that a big run. Now take check out Phoebe there. She's trying to get on the, the bike, just trying to be a lady there. She jumps on the proper way. <laughs> that ball is hit 
to median center field. Victorino makes the catch. Guzman's going to try for second. The throw was offline. He would have made it. He didn't realize it. I said medium center. That ball was carrying pretty good. Yeah, carrying pretty good too, though. And as the outfielders would go, even when you hand the one out, get in that position to be able to throw. Don't make it where you're surprised if that runner's going to go. Now James Darnell, he's 0 for 2. Fly to center or strikeout. Down the right field line. That's a foul ball. That's true. That would have been serious trouble. Well, Looked to be foul though by plenty. It's been that kind of year for Cole. You see three earned runs or less in all six starts. His earned run average at 2.36. Big topic of conversation is uh, what will he do at the end of this year? He's a free agent once the season comes to a close. He's been pretty steady for the Phillies. There's no doubt about that since they brought him up. Always very hard to leave a club that you've been with your whole career. Fly ball left field. And Juan Pierre, he'll settle under it. And there are two outs. Guzman back to first. Other people also ask about, you know, what are we thinking when it comes to Cole beyond this year? And it's tough to think. I mean, this day and age, you know, he's done so much great work, even in Philadelphia, with his with the, the Hamels Foundation, with he and his wife Heidi, donating money and, and goods to schools in the Philadelphia area. And keep in mind, he's going to get better. Okay. I mean, he's been learning, but he's going to get better. Rollins makes a diving play from his knees, throws to second to get Guzman, and the inning is over. And that's the Jimmy Rollins that everybody remembers. That was a fine play on the 6 4 put out. No runs, one hit, one man left. Hamels is through six with a little help from his friend, Jimmy Rollins. An outstanding play to wrap up the top of the sixth. dealer today buy McDonald's get a large sweet tea for one dollar and buy Nissan get to a Nissan dealer for great deals on innovation you can count on innovation for all home half of the sixth inning so he's up three to one it'll be Hunter Pence Ty Wigginton and John Mayberry against Jeff Supon 
who's allowed three runs on five hits so far in this game. A home run to Rollins, an RBI single by Schneider, and an RBI double by Juan Pierre. This guy here, you should be able to have a few more hits than five here. And I say that because it's not a guy that can overpower you. Doesn't have an exceptional, exceptional pitch. He's around the plate, so he's not intimidating. Major League hitters should have pretty good at bats. Well, to his credit, though, he's been pitching and down by two runs, but still in the ball game. Pinner back to the box. One out. Wow. Ball was off the end of the bat and was spinning every which way. Bullpen action for the Padres. Alex Hinshaw is the lefty. It was last year the Padres didn't have a left hander in their bullpen. This year they have a few. Ty Wiggins had reached on error and scored in the second. That popped to short. Over toward the hole. That'll find the outfield grass. And Wigginson. One for his last 23. And gets his first hit of the series. <laughs> 74 pitches for Supon so far. He's fly to left and he's grounded out. Fly ball to left was in foul territory. Guzman made a pretty good play. And a strike. So that fastball's at 86. I don't think he's thrown more than uh, two or three pitches at 86 or 87. Today. Yeah, to his credit though, that 86 here that he threw right on the outside part of the plate. The only way you're going to hit that is if. You're really looking out there. John likes that ball more middle in. It could be two. Bartlett to second for one. Perino blown up and still makes the play. And the side is retired. Wigginson went in hard at second base, but it's a 6 4 3 double play. Jeff Supon has allowed three runs on six hits through six. We go to the seventh. Phillies up by two.
good game here. 3-1 Phillies lead it. Scored a couple runs with two outs, which is a good sign. The one run they did not score with two outs was Jimmy Rollins' 38th career leadoff home run. Cole Hamels had a real quick sixth inning back out there to start the seventh with a strike. And there we go with a two-run lead, Tom. Two-run lead. Bartlett leads it off. Orlando Hudson has come out of the on-deck circle to pinch hit for Jeff Supon. Bartlett today is 0 for 2. He is struck out. He's flied out. And he hits that one in the air to right center field. Should be an easy play for Pence or Victorino. And it's Hunter who makes the call. And there, there's one out. 97 pitches for Hamill so far. Yeah, that sixth inning really helped. You know, he had a couple of innings with 15, 20. And then all of a sudden he has a six pitch inning late in the game. You know, that can go wrong. Now we're going to get him through seven. Maybe we'll even get him through eight. So Wheels is talking about 17, 16, 19, 16, and 21. Those yeah. are a little above the average you'd like a pitcher to be at. And you know, it's not surprising. He's a little bit rusty today, I think. We talked about that early in the game. Plus, he's getting a lot of swings and misses and foul balls today. You know, he's not getting quick outs, except for last inning. Ball one strike to count to Hudson. Supan did a good job for them today, keeping them in the game. You know, nothing overpowering, just basically what the scouting report had on him. Moving around up and down, change speeds, and he got outs. Yeah, he only threw 76 pitches through six innings. Liner to left field, a base hit for Hudson. So Orlando Hudson is aboard, a one out single here in the seventh. Oh, these lucky fans are today's Citizen Seven. They were each a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. Rich Duby to the phone. Nick Billmeyer will answer. And let's see who they get up. It looks like Contreras is going to start the throw. Or at least stretch out. Hudson's on first. He's always a threat to run. As Maven takes strike one. Yeah. It'd be very comfortable with him getting giving them seven innings today. Especially now that they have a base runner. A little more stress. He's had a pitch out of some jams a day too, and that's another thing they'll take into consideration. Territory Mayberry is there makes the catch and there are two outs so two away Chris DeNorfia is due up and as we said Cole Hamill's trying to get through seven here this afternoon and you know we've kind of seen this over the years with Hamill's and with everybody else on the rotation haven't we Murph. And we certainly have to Mac you know you take a look at you know the Phils have had their struggles early in the season but it has not been their starting pitching if you take a look at uh, at the numbers they've had a lot of success you, you look at innings 224 and two thirds coming into today's game they're getting a lot of quality starts from their starters and, and we're seeing another one today out of Cole Hamels. Yeah the earned run average for the staff at three point zero eight which is a, a bet among the leaders for just about all of this year it was second to the Nationals for the first month and then it kind of dipped down a little bit but as we've heard so many times so many times this year right Murph that uh, they've pitched well enough to win more. Yeah we have said that quite often uh, this year whether it, uh, you know a lack of run support or some uh, bullpen issues you know interesting on that graphic too Tom is that out of the top five of the National League three of them in the NL East you've got uh, Miami right there at 212 behind the fills and then Washington in the fifth spot too. Well and part of the reason why the National League East uh, to me is the best division in the National League. It's going to be for the rest of the year too. It's going to be a heck of a battle. Owing to the count to DeNorfia with a runner at first and two outs. The pitch from Hamels inside gets away from Schneider and up to second goes Hudson. So a wild pitch. Speaking of the NL East, John Buck has tied up the Mets 2 2. 
as that game's gone to the bottom of the seventh. Jonathan Neese is out. Zambrano is still in. At least for the time being. It's Cole Hamill's first wild pitch of the season. He has two box, of course. Remember when he had the box called on him in the same game? He disagreed. Still don't know if that second one was a balk, but it was. Here's Contreras warming. He's downstairs. Two pitchers warming upstairs. The one two. Grounder towards shortstop. Rollins charges. Big hop. Northia runs well. Inning over. Hamels is through seven innings this afternoon. No runs. One hit. One man left. Pretty impressive for the Phillies left-hander. The Padres will go to their pen when we come back at the bottom of the seventh. Here you go. Can you name the three other professional teams other than the Padres to draft former Padre Dave Winfield? Well, the NBA and the NFL. Okay, but what teams? You need the teams. Oh, the teams. We didn't say leagues. We knew we knew that it would be easy to name the uh, the leagues. No, I don't know. Well, think about where he went to college. From Minnesota, the Vikings. Vikings. Are, that's one. All right. All right. Think about where he didn't go to college. <laughs> That's really going to help. Uh, let for, me see. What's this for the NBA? Uh, well, yes. It's for basketball, the other two. For basketball, you get drafted twice? Yeah. Well, the Timberwolves weren't around, so they were. Or the Minneapolis, uh, I don't know. Who was it? The Atlanta Hawks in the NBA. Yeah. And the Utah Stars in the ABA. Oh, that's right. There were two leagues back yeah. then. Good Lock question. back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing Dodge Stump the Fans. And Wheels, thanks for the af affirmation for John DeSangro on the question. Good question. Oh, he does good good work. Now, Sang is one of those unsung heroes of these telecasts. <laughs> now we go to the bottom of the seventh. Alex Hinshaw is the new pitcher for the Padres. He'll face the bottom third of the order. Hinshaw has pitched in one game so far for San Diego. Uh, no decision against the Padres. An inning in the third and one strikeout. Freddie Galvis will bat right handed against him. Well, the Phillies, as we go to the bottom of the seventh, they've been in this place many times before. They've either been tied or have a, a slight lead. When they're tied, in the seventh inning or beyond, it well, usually beats trouble. This is a right, two-run lead. That goes right back to what you and Murph were just talking about with all those. And you don't want to point fingers when you're you're looking at a team because it's a team effort. However, you just gave all those numbers for the uh, or those numbers for the starting pitching. 
They have done their job. They've given this team a chance to win a lot of games. And the bullpen and the offense have come up short at this point in the season. It's really not that tough to figure out. Galvis today is over two. He's fly the left. He struck out. His average at 212. Made a heck of a play over at second base. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Braves are shutting out the Cardinals 3 0. Jason Hayward has a bases clearing double. Well, they've jumped on the Cardinals early in those three games so far and won all three and won in a late game of an extra inning on Friday. Phillies going to be in St. Louis in a couple of weeks, two weeks from today. In fact, they'll be finishing up a four game series with the Cardinals. Four. So Galvis is aboard with a leadoff walk. And here comes Carlos Ruiz to pitch it for Brian Schneider. Yeah, they're going to, for the lead, they're going to go for it. Not necessarily for more offense because Schneider's done a good job, but you have a left hander out there, so you, you do this percentage wise, and then you go with your better defensive catcher with a lead. Carlos overall 327 six home runs 22 runs batted in Brian did a great job today though helping them get runs knocked in a two out run and that ball is scorched right back through the middle for Ruiz and he scored as a two out run. Well, they're going to bring Hamels back he was in the on deck circle his afternoon complete with seven innings thought maybe they'd have to get up there to sacrifice the runners up. But they've decided to uh, bring up Placido Polanco, who's a hit shy of 2,000 for his career. Thought he had it last night. Yeah, that would have been a huge hit last night. Might have won the game. Good job by Cole Hamels after a week. Hadn't pitched for a week. I got to look for a bunt here to the Padres. That doesn't mean that Polanco is going to bunt. The reason that Charlie bunts with him a lot of times is he does hit into double plays. So, you know, you get caught in between where they let him swing away, or you can get a base hit for you, but you worry about the double play. Square, he nope. takes low. It's one and zero. Oh. No, this is one of those cases, and you have the lead too. That's another big point about whether you bunt here or not. And you know, you want more runs, but if you didn't have the lead and you're down by two, you almost have to bunt in this situation, get the runners in the scoring position. Now, take a few chances with the lead. But well, ball no strikes the count. And a line drive caught by Darnell. Oh man, he was playing up also, and he still was able to snag that one. Well, he wasn't convinced that Polanco wasn't going to bunt in that situation. Well, that 2,000 hits getting tough. You know, they robbed Polanco last night, and this is highway robbery. Good job by the base runners there, because he's looking for two and maybe for three on that. Yeah, the key was Galvis getting back over at second. Yeah, he 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 could have. Thought, well, I got me a double play somewhere. Well, it's up to Rollins now with two on. Not hitting in a tough lock on that pitch. Rollins homer to start the first for the Phils, his 38th career leadoff home run. He's also fly to left and grounded out to second.
Now the 1 0 pitch inside 2 0. Well, this guy for a right hand hitter looks like he has a nice fastball to hit. And now Jimmy Rollins is in a nice fastball count. Great. The guy who was drafted four different times, three times by the Giants. Finally signed with the Giants when he was selected in the 15th round in 2005. Popped him up. I feel fly roll will be called momentarily. Alonzo has trouble with it and it drops free. The batter's out. Oh the runners can advance and Ruiz is oh. out at second base. Jeez. It's a double play. He what? didn't tag him though. He didn't tag him right. Whoa. He didn't tag him exactly. I was thinking that too. What's he doing? He doesn't tag him. But Black is going out. Because that's a double play. Carlos makes a huge mistake there and gets away with it. See the hitter is automatically out right. so that erases the force. And the, and the runners can go at their own risk. Right. Here it is right here and he doesn't tag him. Yeah, it's not on the back anymore. No. And Carlos kind of leaned away. That and fooled me. And now if he tags him he still could have tagged him. So the put out goes to Alonzo. Here it is the infield fly rule the batters automatically out but that takes a force off. Right they're, they're thinking that since Rollins is running as the arm goes up. And now, now Carlos Ruiz, is, you know, it's almost like he forgot the rule. Right. You know, he doesn't have to go anywhere there. It, it, the rule goes at their own risk. Well, he went at his own risk, and yeah. it, it, because of the, the, the non tag, the Phillies get a break. So, second and third with two outs. And Pierre takes high. So, the infielders, Jason Bartlett in particular, Sure, he realized that Rollins was out, but he probably still thought the force was in play. I mean, it fooled me for a second. Yeah, but it shouldn't fool the players. That was the second baseman's ball, too, to catch that. Alonzo was having trouble from the get go. Inside, 2 0 oh, to Pierre. They really like to make him pay for that. These guys do make mistakes. It's one of the reasons why they're 10 games under 500 already. Saw it last night. Phillies let him get away with it. Well, how did they score the advance on that? Just a fielder's, fielder's choice. choice. Yep. Yeah, when in doubt, <laughs> fielder's choice. Guy moves up a bag. Fielder's choice. In this case, two moved. Dirt three and one now to Pierre. Hunt's gotten a couple of big hits in this spot. He has two two run singles this year with two outs to right field. One of them was off that cashier who we saw here last night. The other one was off a guy in Pittsburgh. I can't think who it was from the Sunday game, the final game of that series. Three and two the cap. All right, so now they've changed it from a fielder's choice to an error on Alonzo to allow the runners to advance. Okay. Never touched it, did he? Yeah, it was hard to tell. He might have gotten a little leather on it. Three and two the count to Pierre. Called strike three. So Juan goes down looking. Phillies force Hinshaw into a little bit of trouble, but he works his way out of that difficulty onto the eighth inning. Alonzo will lead it off for the Padres.
Care for Homes. Talk to us today about how we can help guide you to the loan that's right for you by W.B. Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right and buy the Pennsylvania Lottery. Play Instant Millions, the new instant game for the Pennsylvania Lottery. Must be 18 years or older to play. Please play responsibly. Oh, wholesale changes for the Phillies as we go to the eighth inning. We'll start with John Mayberry moving from first base to left field. Then we go to third. Placido Blanco stays in the game. And Ty Wigginton goes from third over to first. Carlos Ruiz will do the catching. He has to switch helmets. He wore the wrong helmet out there to warm up. And Jose Contreras will be the new pitcher. And they're going to have a starto up right away. These guys have a lot of left-handed potential moves off the bench. They're going to start with a left-handed hitter, but then they go right-right. But they have three left-handed hitters and a switch hitter available right now. Qualls has pitched in each of the last two games. So that's the reason that it's Contreras here in the eighth against Yonder Alonso. He swings at the first pitch. Polanco will give it a look, and it's out of play. This is where the bullpen needs to step up now. This eighth inning is your ball game. Because if you get it to Papelbon, you feel like you have a heck of a chance to win with a, with this lead. Bullpen has been an issue for the Phillies. A 5.13 earned run average coming into this game. We have found ourselves saying an awful lot this year. It's the first time in a while for this. It's the first time in a while for that. Well, it's the first time in a long time that the bullpen has had uh, has been this roughed up. Yeah. Even yes, last year with all the injuries, they were fine. Yeah, and it's it's such a problem early in the season like that because they're falling behind people. Breaking ball inside and low. Good job by Cole today. 108 pitches for Hamels. There were 20. One foul balls mixed in there, so that really built up his pitch count. Still won't walk the leadoff hitter. That gets the other team feeling good about things and get your own team back on their heels. Checked, doesn't matter. Called, strike three. A slider, it looked like. Maybe it was a split, now it was a slider. And there's one away. Had a lot of downward action to it. He must have backdoored him with it. He, he beats his that pitch is down or something like that. He's right. It was down. That's a good break for the Phillies right there. And it's not where he catches it. it it's whether across the front of the plate above the knees. Maybe it did. Don't think so. Now Jesus Guzman who's one for two with an RBI. Two RBIs in the series for Guzman. It's a foul ball. Slowed up uh, his splitter on that one. That was a good splitter. This looked like a curveball the way it broke down and away. Well, now you can go a lot of different ways. You got a right handed hitter buried. Don't have to throw a strike. He hooks it to left field. That'll drop for a hit and go to the wall on one hop. And Guzman is into second with a one out double. Second end of the day for him. Hung it. Didn't, we said he didn't have to throw a strike there. He didn't mean to do it, but he put it right up in the zone for him. Well, Wheels, once the Phillies come back from their series in Chicago, they've got a series against the Red Sox and then three games against the Nationals beginning next Monday, the 21st at 7.05. All three games are night games. Hatfield Dollar Dog Nut on Tuesday, the 22nd. Order your tickets by going to Phillies.com. <laughs> So one out, Hunley is up. The start out continues to warm in the pen for the Phillies. Hunley's 0 for 3. 
Swing and a miss and a breaking ball. It's 0 and 1. And they have Venable, Katze, and Baker. Left handed hitters available and Chase Headley, a switch hitter. And they've already used Orlando Hudson. Not sure how available Katze will be after leaving last night's game with a stiff back. Right. And when you're sitting in the Phillies dugout, you're thinking the same thing. That's why a lot of times <laughs> you don't get injury updates before games. No. Because the other manager, if they're not going to make a move, they want to make sure that the other team yeah. thinks that every pinch hitter is available. Right. It's gamesmanship. Why would they let you know? So we could be a fountain of information. Yeah, right. We well, really tied him up with that pitch. We got a little help on that one, it looked like. That's good. Now he got back to even at 2 2 as opposed to 3 1. Caster's warming in the pen. Bullpen coach is doing a little teaching on both ends. Mick always makes them aware of, you know, if they're going to come into the game, who they could be facing. And they look at reports. Guy has some power, boy. You don't want to hit his bat. He, he, he can pitch to him. He's got a lot of holes, but you make a mistake and he can tie the game. Runner goes, pitches low, gets away from Carlos. It was right in front of him. So runner at third now, and it's three and two to Hundley. Guzman's second stolen base of the year. The Phillies will play the infield back. They'll try to get the out and concede the second run of the day. Three two pitch. Ground ball left side. Run will come home. Might be a tough play. Rollins quick release in time. An RBI on the ground out for a Hundley. It's now a three two game. But there are two outs. Well, he had a catcher running there, and Jimmy made a good play and quick release. Strong throw got him. But that wild pitch puts this within one. Here it is. Hundley does not run all that well. Long throw. Jimmy really couldn't even step into it that much. Use a crow hop. He had to catch it and throw it and got him. Darnell's 0 for 3 in this ballgame. Takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Pilat goes way over toward the line at third. You see the bullpen for the, the Padres. Brock to the right. Kashner to the left. Both right-handers. Yeah, they're taking away any kind of extra base hit here on the left side. And a liner to left field of base hit. They broke it as bat. First hit of the day for Darnell. And here comes Perino. Fans are getting a little uncomfortable right now. Oh, yeah. So are we. So is he. Seen this act too much. That's it. Charlie Manuel's going out. That's going to be it for uh, Contreras. At least I think it is. Bullpen door is uh, swung open. And there's the signal. So a pitching change here in the eighth inning. The Phillies lead is at one with a runner at first. Antonio Pastardo is going to commit. It's an AT&T call to the bullpen here at Citizens Bank Park. The Phillies on top three to two.
series with a business person special. And don't forget, as we get closer to the end of the school year, the Phillies Baseball Academy is open for boys and girls ages 6 to 14. You get professional coaching and you get skill development. It includes official Baseball Academy uniforms, 17 different locations, several different weeks to choose from. Go to PhilliesCamps.com. Jose Contreras is allowed to run, and there's a runner on. Andy Perino, a switch hitter, will bat right handed now against the lefty Bastardo. And a throw over to first. And back easily is Darnell. So it's tomorrow against the Astros at 7.05. Tuesday, a business person special, Citizens Bank business person special. Then the Phillies are on the road again. There's a strike at 92 miles an hour from the start 0 and 1 Antonio's numbers 1 and 1 a 1.80 earned run average Jonathan Papelbon by the way is starting to throw in the pen for the Phillies Yeah, they they know they will use him for an out in the eighth inning at some point they didn't want to do it early in the season, but the way things are going, he's he's starting to get ready quick. You never know. He said it could take him eight pitches, with the adrenaline and everything else. He said he could be ready in eight pitches. Warm day. Yeah, he said in April when it's cool, it's a little different. Here's the one-one pitch. One and two, the count as Perino fouls it back. You don't want him near the eighth, and then if you can avoid it, you know this is where your other guys have to step up and do their job. They have roles. And they have to do their job if they're going to be good. One ball, two strikes the count. And the pitch on the hands. A little looper to short. Caught out of the air by Rollins. The side is retired. One run, two hits, one man left. Three outs to go. But first, the Phils get a chance to take some more hacks as we go to the bottom of the eighth here in Philadelphia. A beautiful day around the Delaware Valley. If you're here at the ballpark, you've enjoyed a pretty good ball game. That's not done just yet as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Phillies up three to two. And it'll be Shane Victorino to start it off for the Phillies. They'll do so against right at a Brad Brock, who pitched at game one of this series. This is the 11th game for Brock. 0 and 1, a 2.89 earned run average. Let's see if the Phillies can get some insurance back. They gave up a run. In the top of the eighth, Jonathan Papelbon continues to throw in the bullpen for the Phillies. Victorino's 0 for 3 today. He's grabbed it out twice. He's also flied to center.
Phillies with three runs on seven hits. The Padres two runs on seven hits. Jeff Supon started for the Padres. He went six. He was pretty effective. Then it was Alex Hinshaw who pitched a scoreless seventh inning. He got into a little bit of trouble, but worked out of it. Now Brock, who has evened up the count one and one to Victorino. Phillies uh, are six and a half games back in the National League East. Nationals and the Reds are still in a rain delay. It's been a long rain delay. Three hours. See, Michael Costanzo was called up by yeah. the Reds to play third base for Scott Rowland. Yeah, uh, Rowland had to go into DL with a bad shoulder again. Two one pitch. With a flare to center field, Maven. I don't think he saw it right away. He was so far back, but he. Well. Maybe he just figured he couldn't get it. Yeah, he couldn't get to that. And they're playing really deep right there. Maybe too deep. Hunter Pence is 0 for 3. He's grounded out a couple times. He is going to be pleased to say goodbye to the Padres. Yeah, they pitched him pretty well, or else he and a combination of getting himself out. If we need to get another run, make it a little bit easier, keep that tie and run further away in the ninth. I said it earlier about what he get what he's into right now. And he does chase bad balls, but he, what he's in right now is he's taking the, the pitches that are really hittable. He takes them, and then he chases bad stuff. And he guesses wrong a lot. You know, the first pitch thinks he's going to get a fastball, so he takes a wild swing at something off speed or way out of the zone. Happens. To the count. He continues uh, to answer the questions though after the game. He said last night, he goes, I got to be better. I have to be able to drive that run. And he meant the one in the seventh inning last night when it popped out. He got a little bit of hanging slider and a pitch of hand. Only pulled off it, popped it up. Oh, and to the count. Was leaning a little bit. He got back. Yeah, it looked like they had him because he did start to lean. They pitch out. So that made him pitch out until they saw that. This guy's pitch out more than any team we've seen so far. And the Phillies haven't stolen that many bags during the series. Now, whether that's because uh, Black has done that often. Well, you know, he did that because he saw the flinch by Victorino, but now he got Pence into a much better count. Outside three and two. Well, he'd love to be able to run in this situation, but he swings and misses so much. This guy's throwing a lot of sliders. I don't know. There's Jimmy talking there to Charlie Manor. Will they take a chance and run here? There goes Victorino swing and a miss the throw to second by Hundley not in time so Victorino swipes the bag. It's well, a strikeout for Pence. He got the three two breaking ball there. And the, we're afraid you know he might swing and miss at it it'll strike out double play. Good job by Shane to steal the bag. You're going to come out and argue with him. Huh? He, was, he was safe. Well it looked like he was safe. They didn't even argue it did they the fielders. Straight steal. 
Maybe they're saying that a swipe tag got him before he got to the bag. Did yeah. he? And when he popped up. Whoop. Nope. No, he's safe. safe. It was close, but you know, it looked like he was safe all the way. Oh, when he saw that replay, it was close. So Victorino 30 for his last 33 in stolen base attempts. Now Ty Wigginton. Many teams have been running on the Phillies still in third base when their pitchers have been forgetting about guys back there and not paying enough attention. And your base run, you go, okay, one quick look he gave me. And then went home. See if he does it again. Same thing, but a little bit longer pause. But he's done the same thing twice now. Two and one the count. Wigginton fouls it back. Wigginton today reached on error in the second and scored. Popped out to short in the fourth. Singled in the sixth. Applebaum just standing on the mound out in the bullpen. He's ready to go. Phillies are hoping to give him a little bit more of a lead. He went, so it's two and two. Well, kind of a frisbee type of slider up there, and he definitely went. Strike three calls it a strike at the knees back to back K's for Brock. Two outs. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, we check back in and what's going on down in Florida. The Mets have taken a 4 2 lead. That game has moved to the top of the ninth inning. Murphy can hit. They find a place for him to play. That's what they keep trying to do. He can swing the bat. Yeah, the Mets are uh, 19 and 14. They're two games behind the Nationals. The Marlins are 17 and 16. They win that game today. They go five and one to Philadelphia and Miami. Pretty good. Mayberry's 0 for three. Want to know the count? Phillies have two two out runs today. Many times that, that wins and loses ball games for you, whether you get them or you give them up. And here would be a sweet time to make it three. Right, sir. Not I don't a good pitch. anybody's pitch. Not a good pitch. Three and one the count. Must be tough for a right hander with Brock throwing across his body like that. Yeah, he's a little bit of a crossfire guy. So, a little bit of a frisbee breaking ball. It'd be much easier to get much more comfortable to hit off from the left side. And it works from the first base side of the rubber. That's one of those scars, Strowman's. Ball four, Mayberry's on. So now it's left up to Galvis with first and second and two outs. Phillies uh, have had a base runner in every inning but one today. That was back in the fourth. 
Freddie walked his last time up, was left over at third. So he's over two. Takes a strike, it's 0 and 1. That is the scoring position. Padres 0 for 8, Phillies 2 for 10. Last night, the Phillies were 1 for 10 with runners in scoring position. They left 12. Well, they got those two two out runs today with the run, hit for the runners in scoring position, trying for a third. One ball, one strike to count to Galvis. Outside, two and one. Nick Hundley just reminded uh, third baseman James Darnell what the signal was on if there was an attempted steal. I think he wants him to stay put. I don't think he wants him to cover. It was kind of interesting because Darnell took a step or two over. Yeah, because it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that much for the runner to get to third. It's more don't let a ball go through the hole. Don't leave all that ground open. <laughs> the much you can do as a manager with the pitcher not throwing strikes. So there's ball four. Pitch was awfully close. The bases are now loaded, and the Phillies will take this because Carlos Ruiz is coming up. Two walks and a base hit in the inning, given up by Brock. Here comes Darren Balsley. Well, this Tuesday, the Phillies and the Houston Astros will play a Citizens Bank business person special. It's the final game of this homestand. The Phillies then head off to Chicago. Following the game, it's the Modell Sporting Goods Senior Stroll, the bases for folks 55 and older. Tickets are available now by going to Phillies.com. So make your purchase 24 7 at Phillies.com. Nobody up in the Padres bullpen downstairs. Papelbon. They're just walking around. And Carlos Ruiz trying to give the Phils a little breathing room. They're up by one, and they have the bases loaded. Carlos takes a strike. It's 0-1. Playing him towards right center, big gap. Well, actually pinching him in the alleys, but more towards right center, giving him the lines. Yeah, the line is wide open in left, and also in right. And he goes the other way. Alonzo knocks it down and then takes it to the bags. The Phillies leave three here in the eighth. They leave the bases loaded. Jonathan Papelbon has just a little wiggle room. He's got a one run lead as we go to the bottom of the ninth.
Fractal. The Phillies will take on the Astros tomorrow and Tuesday. Both of those games are on Comcast Sportsnet. Then it's off to Chicago for two night games. Comcast Sportsnet on the 16th, PHL 17 on Thursday the 17th. Back home next weekend against the Red Sox here at Citizens Bank Park. Jonathan Papelbot is the new pitcher for the Phillies, getting a chance for his first save opportunity since the 1st of May against the Atlanta Braves. It's been that long. He was 9 for or 8 for 8. There are the numbers on him. Left handed hitters 208, right handers 143, and here come these left handed hitters we were talking about. So Owen won a 2.77 earned run average. Papelbon was 8 for 8 in save opportunities in April. 1 for 1 here in May. He was the uh, Major League Baseball's delivery man of the month for the month of April. That's how good he was, but he hasn't had a lot of opportunities. Will Venable will lead it off as a pinch hitter. Venable and then uh, Chase Headley, another pinch hitter. Swing and a miss on the first pitch at 95. Yeah, these, they have these guys left at the end for left-handed batters. Again, a bat against Papelbon. That's what they want. There's Headley. Cole Hamill started. He went the first seven, allowed a run on five hits. He pitched very well. Then Jose Contreras, two thirds of an inning. Bastardo got the final out in the eighth. And now it's Papelbon trying to give the Phils a series victory over the Padres. Swing and a miss at a 95 mile an hour fastball with great life on it. And it's one and two. Venable started the first two you games. Papelbon fall off the mound a little weird. Yeah. Oh, he's holding the side. He's trying to stretch it out a little bit. He slipped. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it just looked really awkward, and Ruiz ran ran right out there, but Scott Sheridan didn't come out. No, Charlie. Scott Sheridan, Phil's trainer. We get a miss. He got it with a splitter. He kind of landed awkwardly again. Yeah. One out here in the ninth. There's something not 100% right right now with him. So here's Chase Headley. Look at him. He's stretching something out right now. Here's another look. Oh boy. Headley, a 244 hitter with four homers and 16 runs batted in. This guy's a pretty good player, and he'll take pitches too. So we get a miss at the first one. It's 0 and 1. That was a splitter. It wasn't a fastball. 90 miles an hour. Cameron Mabin's on deck. Come out throwing strikes. Sure has. And Hedley's one of those guys we're talking about will take pitches, but he's very aggressive here. You know, he has some power. He maybe he's thinking I'm gonna try and tie it up. Got the puppet, got the hat ready to go. The 0-2 pitch. A foul ball. This one out toward the Hall of Fame club up the left field line.
go. He, yes, he did. Says Dan Sonia. Two outs. Headley doesn't realize it just yet. He had to know it, didn't he? Oh, yeah. He just walked and hoping he gets hoping he gets a non call there. Back to back swimming. strikeouts. Definitely chases this. A really good high fastball after those pitches down. It's intentional. And you see Carlos Ruiz set up. He went. From every angle, he's going to go. Thought he even got a piece of that, too. If he'd have hit that thing, it might have gone 200 feet. So now two outs. Back to the top of the order. Cameron may have been the hitter. Well, he's trying to finish off the Padres, finish off the season series. First pitch, just a little inside. And they've been playing this defense. They have them way back in the outfield, no doubles. And uh, Polanco on the line at third on the pull side. They actually have. Wigginton towards the line at first, so he doesn't squirt one down that way. Swing it a miss and a slider. One ball, one strike. The count to Maven. He's two for four. To pitch, Papelbon got hurt on the other night. It was a slider, but he threw a couple of helicopters up there. That was a real good biting down and away slider. To right field. Pence going back. Warning track toward the wall. Makes the catch a few steps shy of the wall. And the Phillies have won the series. They win today 3 to 2 as Jonathan Papelbon picks up his 10th save of the year. It's a one run victory, and today the bullpen did its job. They got to Papelbon, and he gets a 1 2 3 top of the ninth inning. To ease the minds of this Mother's Day crowd here at Citizens Bank Park. 3 2, the final score. Juan Pierre had himself a pretty big day. Pierre had an RBI double in the fifth inning. That provided the Phils with their third run. He finished with two hits overall. Jimmy Rollins, a leadoff home run at the bottom of the first. Cole Hamels is now 5 and 1. He went seven innings, allowed a run on five hits. And Jonathan Papelbon finished it off and why not Cole Hamels really battled today and had some pretty good stuff as this game moved on. Yeah he did a great job. He's won his last Phillies have won his last six starts and he's five and oh in them. Started off you know he looked like he was a little bit rusty didn't have great command and then started to pick it up a lot of foul balls so he went seven innings but he had really good command as the game went along gave him a heck of a chance to win the ball game and that's what he did and he is our Chevrolet player of the game. All right what Pierre as we said had a big day in front of his mom and his wife on Mother's Day. Greg Murphy has Juan down on the field. All right. Thank you very much C-Mac. Yeah two of the eight hits uh, off the bat of Juan Pierre the biggest obviously in the bottom of the fifth inning. Uh, the go ahead of the eventual winning run. Take us through that at bat one. Um, just uh, was looking for some um, out over the plate. Uh, try to bun a tempo. I was going to push it and try to surprise. I know Snyder can't run over there. So I was trying my hard bunt, so they'll try to get me. That didn't work, and um, he came. Once I got two strikes, I had to cover every pitch, and he left one a uh, little bit out over the plate more than he would like. And I usually don't hit him down that line too often, but uh, it worked out today. It worked out today indeed, and it worked out. Uh, I know your mom was here, and your wife is here, and your baby as well. I, oh, always nice to play well in front of mom, right? Always, always. Uh, good thing mom doesn't care whether you go over for four or four. She still loves you. Now, dad, on the other hand, is different, so Father's Day will be a little different. <laughs> but uh, it was good to have my uh, family in town and do well. That is so true. Let me just ask you a big picture. Uh, you win this series over San Diego after uh, being swept out by the Mets. Just how important is it for this team? Is it something to build on, winning a, winning a series like uh, this? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. You win series throughout the season, um, your record will be good in the back. Uh, but right now where we're at, we'll take this one um, and uh, going into tomorrow with a little bit of confidence. But, uh, yeah, where we're at now, definitely to win a series is good. Because coming off the sweep, you just want to win one in the series, but definitely winning the uh, two games here and hopefully keep, continue to keep it going. All right, Juan, continued success to you. All right, thank you. Juan Pierre, a pleasing mom and going to please dad on Father's Day as well, I'm sure, T Mac. All right, Murph, thank you very much. The Phils win it 3 to 2. Jonathan Papelbot is 10th save of the year. Cole Hamels' fifth win. We'll be back to talk more about it right after this.